there is no best pose, right? Every pose reveals a different aspect, right? A different articulation of the arm, an arm that's over, raised overhead, or an arm at the side, totally changes the forms entirely through the shoulder, through the back, through the chest, through the abdomen a little bit, you know? So there's sufficient difference in every pose that I suppose start with something reasonably simple to get a, a base understanding, which could just be a standing pose. But a lot of people have that as an entry point anyways. But beyond that, like the, what my advice is, is don't just learn anatomy from the standing pose. That would be like the entry into understanding like amazing things the body can do. Because if you know the arms by the side and you raise the arm to the side, things change. And as soon as you understand how it changes, then you're understanding about you know, the, the muscle flow and the origins and the insertions of certain muscle groups. And, and through uh, a number of poses, you deepen your understanding of all these articulations and, and forms that it creates. And that's what you draw, that's what you sculpt. And yeah, those are the pieces of the puzzle, right? So for the bodies in motion stuff, I shoot a lot of photographs. Like I have the models there for hours at a time, and we shoot a lot of stuff. Not all of it gets selected. Um, often it's a complete motion, start to finish. So something that has a succinct start, a succinct finish, a nice continuity to it, right? And that's that's kind of a concession to people who are animating as well and want like a a good starting point where there's no motion to a good finishing point where it, the motion kind of resolves. But also it just makes a nice presentation. And then uh, often we try to shoot profile shots, not exclusively, but if a motion is unfolding from left to right, we'll, we'll do that. Um, sometimes front to back coming right at the camera, but often it's more instructive to see the body side to side, again, mostly for animation, but at the same time, there's sufficient variety in all the poses that we have that we, we capture the body from every angle. And some of the stuff goes in just because it's cool. Um, some things are selected because they have like one amazing shot that's beautifully lit. And some I just like and put them in there because I think they're, they're nice pictures. It's that balance. Like there's, there's a lot of stuff to study for whatever your discipline. You know, if you're just there to, to look at, make compositions, there are some really beautifully composed stills that will come out of the sequences. But if you just want to do gesture, a little gesture sequence of animation, you can do that too. So there, there's, there's enough variety, but something that will continue to expand over time. So we'll fill in the gaps and you know, take requests. So there's, there's, there's a lot of work to do. So the, the, the lighting and the photography, it varies. Like most of the time I'm very concentrated on getting a good key light. It gives you kind of uh, three quarters above lighting on the form. And then we'll balance that with the, we'll, we'll often get all the fill light out of the reflection off the, the diffuse reflection off the cove. So we'll shoot on white. We have balanced light off the ground, off the walls. And then we'll, we'll often kind of have a, a, a rim light kind of illuminating the far surface, the far silhouette of the body. And th that combination of light generally gives nice description of the form. But at the same time, sometimes the, there's just beautiful lighting when we turn off the key light and we put two rim lights behind and just actually sculpt a silhouette. And then again, there's enough fill light coming in from the cove that this is not totally black and sculpted in a different way. Um, forms and figures. And so it depends. Uh, often I'll have on the camera, I'll have regions on the lights. So I'll have like A, B, and C, which would be like key, fill, and then back background lights. And I'll just toggle them on and off and shoot sequences in various combinations. They're sufficiently different, even if it's the exact same motion repeated again. Artistically, you're like, wow, I saw this under this lighting condition. And it was interesting, but under this lighting condition, I see something totally different in the same figure. Varying the lighting is, is also important uh, because it highlights different planes of the body, right? Again, like hard question to answer. It's changes, probably whatever pose is in front of me. It depends what you're doing, right? Like some of them are just like super challenging with foreshortening and 
all the, the big forms, the body just overlapped one after the other from certain action. That's a big challenge for you to spatially manipulate the, the volumes to, to a way that you can draw it, right? So you can understand what you're drawing. And then other, often there's, you know, it might be somebody doing like a static pose, like a handstand or, you know, pulling themselves up on rings. And it just has beautiful kind of tension versus relaxation in the anatomy. Like there's different things to study in that. You know, so different different things, and each pose is is unique, and that's kind of the magic of it. That you get this this window into a, a huge number of possibilities to study.